Click on the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello everybody. I am Zulfikar and I am faculty for economics. So as you know, we will, I will discuss strategy for uh, taking up Indian economy, how to tackle Indian economy for prelims as well as means point of view. Okay, so I'll take up Indian economy. Okay, so this is a, you know, session for taking up a strategy ki how you should approach towards civil service exam, how you should study Indian economy uh, from, uh, for, uh, means for both the examinations, prelims and means. And obviously, means also include interview broad. Okay, so we, I will discuss here broad approach. What should be your approach towards uh, studying, uh, how to study Indian economy? Other thing, you know, very important thing for civil services preparation is uh, uh, the relevance of syllabus, the relevance of topics. So which thing is relevant, which is irrelevant. So that is very important because there is no dearth of knowledge. Uh, but in uh, UPSC syllabus is well defined, so you have to be within that parameter because uh, otherwise uh, time is limited and anything could be asked. So relevance is very important. Other is actually the uh, depth, which is what is needed, depth of a study or level of study. So how much depth of uh, knowledge needed or a study other is actually relevant study materials like books. Books and uh, you know most of questions are from current affairs, so what should be approach towards current affairs? So I will mainly discuss on these issues and I will discuss your doubts, whatever doubts you have, we will discuss those doubts. Okay, so first of all, I will rather start with this topic relevance. So you know, ke for in preparation of civil services, lot of study materials are there. You know, earlier there was a problem that study material were not available, but now problem is opposite. Now you have so much of study material, ke problem is that what to study, what not to study. Problem is there is a lot of information bombardment is there. So obviously, uh, which, what to study, what not to study, and uh, uh, all rom, uh, all study materials which are available, they are not relevant for UPSC. Maybe good, maybe uh, uh, means uh, uh, quite actually quality may be good, but may not be relevant for UPSC. So relevance is most important thing. So do you, uh, do you know okay, how which thing will give you relevance? How do you know? Okay, like for example, you are studying in you have to study Indian economy. So from where you will get idea about relevance? Uh, two things are there. So one is actually. Uh, pre, uh, the syllabus and second is previous year's questions. Previous year's questions. These are the two things which are very important. So first of all, syllabus is very, very important. So especially syllabus of, syllabus of which subject is more important, prelims or mains? Uh, in prelims, they have not mentioned elaborate syllabus. It is very short actually. They have just given name of the broad topics. So syllabus of prelims won't give you much idea about the coverage. And in prelims, do you think syllabus is much relevant or not relevant in prelims exam? In uh, syllabus, you know, prelims and means. So syllabus is more relevant or less relevant? Hmm? less relevant because in prelims there is no well-defined syllabus anything could be asked anything they can ask so as such it is not much important for this it is very important for means in means you know especially in economy section at least 
almost 70 to 80 percent, almost 80 percent questions are directly from slavers. Okay, so it is very important. So once you are preparing for civil services, slavers of means, you should actually rather know by heart. You should stick on your uh, in your actually study room and keep on actually uh, just uh, revise it again and again. Why? Because syllabus will give you relevance in everything. Like you are studying your textbook. Apart from that, when you are going through newspaper or magazine, you will know what is relevant because whatever topic is mentioned. Because almost in economy section, almost 80 question, percent questions are directly from the syllabus which is mentioned. And syllabus is very limited here. Slavers is not very wide, especially in means in economy rather it is very limited slavers. So first thing is that for relevance, so you should know slavers of means. Okay, topic should be very clear so that you should not waste your effort. One thing. Second thing is uh, regarding slavers of means. So this is slavers of means. So in slavers they have mentioned in which uh, paper in an economy is there by and large. Hmm? mainly in paper 3 gs3 so this is labors of uh, gs3 you know they have mentioned like one is indian economy and issues relating to planning mobilization of resources growth development employment inclusive growth and issues arising from it so i have divided in five sections overall the labors of indian economy like first is indian economy like features of indian economy the current issues trends policies relating to planning other is that planning and reforms and the policy and mobilization of resources related with this growth and development basic concepts of growth development economic growth economic development inclusive growth and issues relating to socio-economic issues here indian economy and uh, related issues actually mainly socio-economic issues second uh, topic is actually government budgeting so government budgeting means uh, related with government's budget, receipts of government, expenditures of government, government's deficits and including taxation policy and various fiscal reforms, central state financial relations, cooperative federalism, etc. These things are there in the second. Third component is actually, uh, you know, third component is too long. That is all, all topics are related with agriculture. So agriculture, so in main syllabus you see that almost major part is related with agriculture. And that is why you can see at least three questions in means every year. Three to four questions are directly from agriculture. It means that three questions are bound to be there on agriculture and from these topics only. You can see since pattern change since last seven years, almost seven, eight years. So at least three questions to four from this, these topics, directly from these. Okay, like major crops, cropping and cropping patterns in various parts of the country, different types of irrigation system and irrigation system, uh, irrigation system is uh, no, sorry storage, transportation, marketing of agriculture commodities, issues and related uh, related constraints means uh, transportation storage like buffer stock, e technology in the aid of farmers. Ke how e technology can help farmers in increasing productivity, issues relating to direct and indirect subsidies, types of subsidies, and major subsidies problems and uh, reforms in that minimum support prices msp procurement price price policy what are issues with msp policy public distribution system pds objectives ke pds and some reforms of pds like national food security act 2013 to functioning limitations revamping then other is issues relating to buffer stock buffer stocking uh, how they are maintain issues and some such reforms food security the concept of food security what are components and what is the status of India in food security. Other is technology missions mainly includes research and development, R&D and then providing those uh, that new technology to farmers so that productivity production should increase. So technology missions like green revolution, white revolution and other technology missions. And other is economics of animal rearing. So some uh, animal rearing uh, uh, means like cattle rearing for actually you know and dairy etc and some issues and government policy is simple. Okay, other is food processing and related industries in India. So actually food processing as such is not agriculture, it is industry, manufacturing sector, but it is very much related with agriculture. It is related with agricultural marketing because farmers sell their output to the, uh, to actually these farms, they will buy. So they will enable farmers to get better prices, it will help in reducing wastage. This is highly labor intensive, very important industry. That is why separate topic is mentioned, so food processing industries. Uh, in India, a scope, significance, location, streaming, uh, means up streaming means, streaming means things which are uh, buying raw material, transportation, storage. 
एंड डाउन स्ट्रीमिंग मीन्स के प्रोसेसिंग एंड सेल ऑफ आउटपुट तो वॉट आर अप स्ट्रीमिंग डाउन स्ट्रीमिंग इन फूड प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्रीज एंड देन लैंड रिफॉर्म्स दैट दिस इज ऑल्सो रिलेटेड विद एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर दिस इज रिलेटेड विद रिफॉर्म्स ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूशन रिलेटेड इन एग्रीकल्चर लाइक साइज ऑफ लैंड होल्डिंग रेगुलेशन ऑफ एक्चुअली टेनेंसी एंड अबोल्यूशन ऑफ इंटरमीडियज एक्सेट्रा ओके तो ऑल दीज टॉपिक्स आर रिलेटेड विद एग्रीकल्चर तो यू कैन सी इफ यू सी क्वेश्चन ऑफ द लास्ट एट ईयर्स यू विल फाइंड के एवरी ईयर देर आर एक्चुअली क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम दीज टॉपिक्स मीन्स थ्री टू फोर क्वेश्चन एवरी ईयर इट मीन्स ओके अदर इज फोर्थ टॉपिक इफेक्ट्स ऑफ लिबरलाइजेशन ऑन द इंडियन इकोनॉमी तो एल पी जी पॉलिसी इकोनॉमिक रिफॉर्म्स यू नो वी अडोप्टेड इन विच ईयर इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी वन तो वॉट आर रिफॉर्म pros and cons and how what has been changed in policy since then and the outcomes also after reforms like growth and improvement in developmental outcomes other is changes in industrial policy and their effect on industrial growth to so industrial policy actually from new industrial policy 91 till now make in india start up india stand up india etc and other measures to improve ease of doing business so mainly liberalization and industrial policy although broadly there are questions from external sector also like fdi etc may be included here but that is not uh, clearly mentioned so this is related with somewhat globalization fdi foreign trade etc other is fifth topic is infrastructure so they have mentioned uh, five infrastructure sectors like energy ports roads airports and railways etc and investment model so first of all in energy what is what you need here directly if you see uh, usually there is one question Uh, from infrastructure maybe infrastructure or maybe uh, investment models investment is actually model are various uh, public private partnership models are there ppp models like because most of the you know roads are constructed in uh, in partnership of government and private sector so ppp models are there like built operate transfer built operate lease transfer like uh, design build uh, uh, means engineering procurement construct construction so various types of models are there and uh, in every this topic you should know like in energy or ports what is needed mainly three four things you should know you should know ki energy means ki what is status of energy what are sources what is total production how much is shortage what is current status yes status of ports or status of roads you should have idea one thing second thing you should know ki what are government schemes to promote actually energy renewable energy for development of ports actually like sagarmala and in roads what schemes are there third thing what are problems constraints actually in this so what actually problems are there which have to be rectified and relating to this is suggestions whatever problem we have to overcome session so mainly three important thing you should remember to so in this case like what is status of this sector then government schemes policies to promote this sector and then problems problem suggestions are somewhat related because suggestion will be to overcome problem how the scheme could be modified or whatever scheme is there to so what flaws are there so these are the five broad topics which are mentioned in your main syllabus so in mains questions are mainly from directly 80% questions are directly from these topics but apart from that do you think this is the complete syllabus of economics yes or no no there are few more topics like i told you ke like five topics we have discussed now i may add few more top i will add few more topics like six topic is external sector external sector because example is foreign direct investment okay so foreign direct investment uh, is although questions have been asked but broadly i think they are considering it here in liberalization okay so foreign direct investment uh, there were uh, i think at least three questions were asked in the last 7 8 years on fdi other investment is portfolio investment but fdi is more important because in foreign direct investment foreigner will establish a business unit along with management control in portfolio investment foreigner will buy shares only so that is less important that is volatile also apart from that other is uh, topic is balance of payments bop balance of payment so balance of payment is actually record of a country with the rest of the world whatever we are receiving whatever forex and whatever payment we are making so balance of trade current account balance is a part of this other is actually trade policy trade policy uh trade policy means foreign trade policy and uh, various actually like we have current trade foreign trade policy 2015 to 20 now special economic zones we are signing signing various free trade agreements will come under this 
even indirectly WTO is also related with this. Uh, like recently there was issue relating to uh, RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Apart from that there are some other issues like exchange rate systems, exchange rate systems like uh, fixed exchange rate system where exchange rate is fixed by central bank, other is uh, this floating exchange rate system where it is based on demand and supply. So in India we have which type of exchange rate system? Fixed or floating? No, no floating. So RBA don't fix exchange rate, now it is based on demand and supply. So appreciation, depreciation and factors which affect appreciation, depreciation. So mainly these topics are there in external sector, like sixth point means the, with the rest of the world like, and even including globalization here. So globalization policy and the uh, impact actually and even in currently there is some anti-globalization measures are there in the world, what measures, why and what is impact. So this is a sixth point which is not mentioned in the syllabus, although questions are there from these topics. Okay, so I think they might have considered it under here. Apart from that other sector is actually money and banking, money and banking. So in this money, money supply, RBI, monetary policy, banking, problems of banking like recently what are problems in banking? Like non-performing asset NPA means default on bank loans have increased and lot of measures were initiated by government to reform that even bank merger banks have been actually government has merged some public sector banks and there are some problems with public sector bank the government is infusing capital inf investing money in public sector banks that is called recapitalization of public sector banks some committees were set up to these things actually and in including financial sector reform so government is reforming some financial system also financial markets to these things are there to money banking financial markets like stock exchange also reforms in financial sector in general okay any other sector so apart from these five uh, topics, so uh, banking is major sector, one is this sector, although in means questions are there. In means questions uh, have been asked, I think, uh, I think two questions have been asked in last eight years uh, in relating to banking. Means one is uh, as of for merger of SEBI and IRDA and other is on financial inclusion like it was on uh, um, this uh, SSG bank linkage scheme. Another is, but in banking, in means you know, you can, uh, what kind of question you can expect. Uh, one question may be technical type question, other is actually some uh, banking issue which may affect general public, which is more important. Uh, usually you cannot expect much technical things, in prelims they ask the basic concepts, but here they will ask mainly those things which have some social implications, general implications. So banking as such is not mentioned, that is a questions in general, in 8 years hardly 2 questions were asked from this and that is also related with current only. Okay. Apart from that, in uh, economics what are other sections? Other section may be, uh, other is just miscellaneous, like uh, basic concepts like national income, Okay, and other, other poverty social aspect is already included. So national income and even developmental programs may be included here or may be taken up in social issues as well as in governance. So other miscellaneous issues or some global financial issues, global financial issues like the current actually reason for slowdown impact and other like current slowdown in India itself. So this is the syllabus. So I again give you recap of this syllabus, so what is syllabus means, so five topics have been mentioned in the main syllabus. One is Indian economy and planning and social issues like employment, poverty and, and this, it is in poverty is related with employment and inclusive growth, one topic. Second, government's budgeting. Third, agriculture. And fourth is in, uh, liberalization means reforms and industrial policy and other is infrastructure. So five infrastructure sector and infrastructure investment model. Okay, so five topics, one is external sector, other is money and banking, other are miscellaneous actually, like minor topics. So this is the syllabus of UPSC overall, so especially these topics are important. Now in prelims, you know that in mains questions are 80% will be directly from here, 20% will be from current. Okay, so two things, so one is 80% directly from these topics, but in these topics you have to explore actually various dimensions like what kind of question may be asked actually on a particular topic. Uh, so you have to see on a particular topic what kind of like for example land reforms. 
So twice question has already been asked. In agriculture, most of the topics they have asked questions. So you uh, should know ki what kind of question may be asked. First of all, you should know the basics of land reform, ki what are land reform measures. Then you should have idea about actually the achievements and failures, to what extent these have been successful. Apart from that, you should know the relevance of land reforms now. Shall we revisit them? What is relevance now? Because mostly questions are tilted. They are interrelated with current things. Land reforms were initiated immediately after independence gradually in 50s, 60s, 70s. But now what is relevance now? So you have to think like in a particular topic, so after going through basics, you have to think what kind of question may be asked. What is current relevance of that topic? So I repeat once more, ki in mains questions you can easily tackle in case of mains. Because 80% will be directly from here. So each topic you should know ki what is basic and you have to think what kind of question may be asked. Three, four, five di dimensions you have to explore and you should have actually how much content to write for means. Uh, one page, two page or more. Uh, for every aspect, like land reform, basic concept one thing. There may be then what is actually achievement and failure. What is current pol policy now? What are uh, suggestions uh, for future? Maybe th four or five dimensions we can uh, get. So on every dimension you should have how much content? At the most one page, half to one page. Because it means they won't ask only on one topic. They will ask at least two, three aspect of one, one thing. So hardly you have to write two pages. So on every topic you should just jot down four, five, six points so that you can uh, write at the most one page, half to one page on every aspect. So 80% questions will be directly from here and 20% questions will be related to current. But here also most of these are those, out of these things, whichever is in news, uh, most probably question will be from this. From this topic, current relevance will be there. And some topics, 20% may not be mentioned, but purely from current. Okay, so this is the syllabus actually of means. Now, as far as prelim syllabus is concerned, so as I told you, okay, you have to see, syllabus won't give you idea about relevance. So, syllabus will give you fairly good idea about relevance in this. So, for that purpose, you have, to see, you have to see questions of prelims. In prelims, you know, there are two types of questions. One is simply the concept based, basic concepts. You should know the basics. And second is actually the current based questions, current issues, current policies, current new measures, reforms initiated by government. Simply two things. Okay, so in means, one is directly from the syllabus, from each uh, aspect you have to explore, and second is the current important, con and it means the focus on contentious issues, current issues on which there is debate. Should, should it be there or should we uh, do this thing or not thing? Is it desirable or not? Whether this committee suggested, shall we follow this policy or not? So it is on mainly contentious. And in actually prelims, so uh, as I told you, basic concepts, and second is actually anything whichever is in, which is in news current. But in prelims, which out of these now eight sections, which is most important? In prelims, these five or these? In prelims, these topics are more important. Banking and external sector, lot of actually questions were asked actually uh, in prelims. For example, like uh, I will give you idea about questions, some uh, questions in uh, prelims. So like for example, I think three or four questions were asked in uh, on banking uh, in this year, 2019. In 2019 in prelims, you know uh, around three or four questions were asked in prelims. One question actually on banking was service area approach. So earlier there was a question on lead bank scheme. There is a scheme of lead bank. So in lead bank scheme in every district, one bank is actually assigned as lead bank. It has to coordinate activities of other banks so that uh, credit should be provided to all economic activities. So, and within lead bank, a uh, few villages are given to uh, particular bank branches under service area approach. So this is actually, uh, this is related with social things like how we can increase credit flow to agriculture sector, rural sector. So this is uh, from banking and this is actually, you know, not related with current. It is basic concept, one is scheme actually of banking. Other question actually in banking is that which one of the following is not an asset of banks? So one question was simply basic concept. Which one of the following is not an asset of bank? Loan, bank deposits, what do you think? Loan or bank deposit, which is not a? Bank deposit is a liability. Yes, so not asset is deposit. The so option was deposit. That is very basic concept actually. Because bank loan are actually assets. If you borrow for you, it is a uh, liability. For bank, it will be asset. 
and if you are paying loan, loan means EMI it is performing asset and if you default for more than three months then that loan will become non-performing asset NPA for bank. So this is another basic concept from banking. Other is uh, relating to banking is inter-creditor agreement. So because you know NPAs actually are have increased much. So government is focused, uh, government set up one committee actually uh, uh, Sushil Mehta committee, Sunil Mehta committee sorry, so that committee suggested that bank should agree, uh, enter into an agreement to cooperate among themselves in recovery through inter-creditor agreement. So now banks are recovering NPS through inter-creditor agreement. So there was a question on inter-creditor agreement. They have asked basically it is related with which thing. So option was related with inter-creditor agreement is related with resolution of NPS of banks. Okay, so this was another question on banking. Okay, so there were, uh, an, another question is from money in banking is money multiplier. So they have asked actually what is money multiplier, how money multiplier will increase. If RBI money multiplier is actually, uh, you know, ke if government will print 100 rupee note, so do you think overall money supply will increase by 100? No, it will increase by more than 100. So it will increase by multiple of that and value of that will depend on what? Money multiplier. More bank can lend money multiplier, value of money multiplier will be high. So option was if RBI will increase CRR, can bank lend more? Cash reserve ratio? No. So one option increase in CRR, one option increase in SLR, it will also not increase. Other is increase in banking habits of public. This is the correct option. So when bank people will keep more money, bank will give loan. Then money will come to bank, then again bank will give loan. Bank give loan again and again. This is credit creation process. So these are actually basic questions only from banking. So you can see four questions directly from banking. Now they were around I think almost same questions on external sector. I'll give you a brief idea about those questions on external sector. So one question was uh, which of the following can check rupee depreciation? Which of the following can check rupee depreciation? So they have mentioned ke like uh, restrictions on imports, yes or no? In general, if inflow of dollars will be there, rupee will appreciate. And if outflow of dollars will be there, the rupee will depreciate. So anything which is leading to inflow will check rupee depreciation. Outflow will lead to depreciation. So one option was that restrictions on import. So will it check? Yes, import restriction will check, outflow will check. Okay, other is that issue of masala bonds. Masala bond means ki rupee denominated bonds issued abroad. So it is a means of borrowing. So when we borrow, it, they, it will lead to inflow. It will not lead to rupee depreciation. So actually current option, uh, correct option was that increase in uh, money supply. If RBI will increase money supply, so rupee will depreciate. Why? Because if you have more rupees in India, so you will buy more or less from abroad. If you have more rupees, you will borrow, buy more. Buy, sorry. If you have more rupees, you will buy more from India as well as from rest of the world. So you know our import depend on our income or foreigners income? our income and our money, if money supply will be more, then overall outflow of forex will increase and rupee will depreciate. So increase in money supply is actually, it is related with banking system as well as related with ex uh, means external exchange rate system. Okay, so one question on external sector was, which one can check rupee depreciation? And even one more question was there on banking, okay, who appoints uh, uh, chairman of public sector banks, government banks? Uh, Ministry of Finance. Actually, one common confusion in that is that government set up bank board bureau, but bank bu board bureau gives suggestions only. Appointment is made by finance ministry. Okay, so one more question on this. Now, other question on this uh, is uh, uh, relating to external sector is, uh, you know, uh, one bank is there in Asia, Asia uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. So, the, some question, ki India is the largest shareholder in that bank, correct? No, that bank is established by China. India is second largest, but China is largest shareholder. Okay, and the one statement was there, ki no outside member is there in that. All members are from Asia. That is also wrong. So, because some America is also member in that and some other dev, uh, European countries are members. So, that is, was in news actually, but not only last year, in the last three, four years, it was in news. Other is actually uh, participatory notes. So, participatory notes is a source of portfolio investment like the individuals who don't want to invest directly, they don't want to give their details, they can invest through financial institutions, FII. 
and through participating or not. They were in news actually, so this was asked. So another question on this is, on what are, simple, it was a direct definition of participatory notes. They have given definition and they said it is, which one of the following is correct, participatory notes and other options they have given. So on option directly, you have to identify the definition of this. Other is, which one will reduce currency risk? So currency risk means related with actually uh, forex, related with balance of payment. Okay, which one will increase the uh, may increase the risk of foreign currency, like shortage of forex? Okay, like remittances, increase in government expenditure. Okay, other is there was a two statement were there. External debt, debt from abroad is mainly on government. Correct or wrong? No, like in last year budget, government said that debt on uh, in government of India from abroad is less so we are planning to borrow more so in that context in budget it was mentioned government said we will borrow from abroad that is why it is question from external sector but actually related with current budget to on external debt one question was on patents ki, uh, ki plant varieties can be patented by patent act no uh, option is no because we have uh, we have a separate act for that protection of plant varieties in farmers rights act 2001 Okay, other questions were actually uh, like factual, which may be put in current uh, miscellaneous or may be put in economy, like uh, uh, the largest import agricultural, imported agricultural item is which one? Vegetable oils. Second largest is pulses. Other is that ke, which country is the largest exporter of rice? So India actually is the largest exporter, take over Thailand earlier. So some factual. So you can see ke, around five, six questions were from here. Apart from that, there were other questions from planning, etc. So I just give you a brief idea. So maximum questions are almost, you can see, about all, uh, if you see directly, indirectly, about 12, 13 questions were there from these topics. So overall, 20 questions are usually asked in economy section, including current. So almost, uh, means 10 to 12 questions were directly from just these two topics. So prelims, these two topics, concept things are, conceptual things are important. Some basic concept and other is uh, the uh, means uh, current issues. Okay, so uh, I think it is clear. So regarding relevance, so, uh, I repeat once more, ki syllabus especially for means you should learn that syllabus because means questions are here and some from current. And for prelims actually, uh, previous year's questions will give you an idea and these are the, this is the syllabus and topics. So this is about relevance. Okay, now second thing is actually overall uh, depth of study. So to what extent you should go in detail? So do you think here, much depth research orientation is needed or not? No. What is requirement of UPSC? Just two things. For depth, you know, one thing is that you should be basic, should be crystal clear. They should be clear. It should not, you should not have idea. Idea will not work here because the options are very close. If let's suppose you have read uh, a lot of things and you have some idea, so ultimately you will lose in negative marking because uh, the idea, um, basic concept should be very clear. Okay, what is this concept? You should know exactly what is this, what, how it is different from related concepts. So think there are differences are there. Like in, for example, economic growth, economic development, inclusive growth, are they same? No, they are different. In, economic growth means only increase in production. Economic development means increase in production along with social welfare. Inclusive growth means economic development by employing people, by, through a participative process. Sustainable development means development which could be sustained. It means that we have to take care of environment along with development. So there are minor differences uh, are there in the concepts. So basic should be very crystal clear. The reason is that ki in you, uh, objective questions, you know there is one correct answer out of four and other three are called distractors. And what is objective or distractor? Ki those people who, they want to distinguish between people who know and who don't know, candidates who know and who don't know the clarity. So basic concept should be very clear. So one thing is that in every subject you should have an idea about the basic concepts actually about that subject. No need for actually doing research on that. Second thing is actually the analysis. Analysis actually, analysis in the context of current, current affairs. Whatever, let's suppose you study any article in newspaper, you should be able to correlate with that. For example, you, you have studied basics of banking, but now if RBI in, uh, announce any measure to reduce NP, you should know ke how this will help, what are issues. So you have to correlate. You should, what is requirement of UPSC, you should discuss that issue with anybody. This is the only thing. And for understanding any current issue, 
you should know the basics of that. For example, if you don't know what is monetary policy, what is CRR, SLR, so how would you understand the any reform in monetary policy? So you should have idea about basics. Similarly, if you let's suppose you don't have idea about basics of our constitution, how do you understand governance issues, political issues? So basics and analysis. This is the only thing you should be able to correlate. And here, research orientation is not needed actually. And that is why you know a lot of students even qualify in first attempt. So in the last few years, actually first second attempts have somewhat increased. Reason is that ki now it is not uh, what is not needed. Ki just uh, cramming is not needed. You should have a holistic perspective uh, of this. And things are, you should correlate things. And uh, the object, you know, the pattern is that they have not mentioned the name of subjects. They have not mentioned economy, geography, history. They have mentioned topics. Why? Because topics, one topic may have some aspect from economic perspective, from historical perspective, from other perspective. So you have to interrelate things. So they want to know your uh, means understanding of topics. So basics and you have to analyze, uh, connect with current, with newspaper. Okay, one, uh, this is the depth only required, no research is needed. And for that purpose, you have to study more books, less books. Less books. You know, every topper says this thing, okay, don't study 10 books, just one book 10 times. That is most important thing. But you have to be very selective in selecting the book. So study material should be very, very limited. And don't buy much books, because if you buy m books, so books may be, uh, lying in your table, but your the burden will be in your mind. You will know that okay, I have not read this, 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 this. So research is not needed. Okay, so very to the point things are needed. Now the question is books. And I have not discussed about approach. So approach is basically the same thing here. Approach is actually uh, whatever is relevant. And most important thing is that okay, focus should be on learning. So never study. You should always learn. There is a difference in studying and learning. Uh, studying, most of the students, you know, ki they think ki they are attending classes, they are reading notes, and most of the students do. And the fact is that ki that both things are just means. They will not help to qualify exam. Most of the students do this thing. And fact is that rather I bluntly tell in the class sometime, ki almost in every, in general coaching, you know, majority of the students are not even in race. Because if they are not committed, because it is zero or one, even if you are one mark behind cutoff of prelims, you are out. Or means or final selection, you are out. So here, either one or zero. So if you are preparing for civil services, for IS, so sincerity is needed actually. And sincerity, what I think here is that okay, for overall syllabus, and not only economy, I think at least one year before prelims is needed, at least one year. Just uh, minimum is the time period. And I think if you are attending classes, and uh, six, um, uh, seven, eight hours, if you can effectively learn, that is more than sufficient. What I believe actually, and a lot of toppers have told me this thing. So learning, the approach is very important. You should not focus on studying ke how much hours I have uh, studied. Most important thing is that how much you have learned. And what is meaning of learning? Learning simply means understanding. If you have understood something, that is learned. Simply, nothing more than that. And the only thing is that ke you have learned, for example, I told you like FDI, so foreign direct investment. Foreign direct investment, ke foreigner will establish a company here along with management control. They will do business here along and they will participate in management. If you have understood this basic thing, basic thing you have understood. I have not gone into detail, detail, although it's very long topic, it will take almost three hours, two and a half to three hours FDI. So if you have understood the concept, it means that you have learned. So FDI means foreigner is establishing business and doing um, managing company. And other type of investment is portfolio investment in which foreigner will buy shares. No role in management, just buy shares and no role in management. That is portfolio. So if you have understood, it means that that is learned only. The second most important problem will be you have understood now. But after few uh, means maybe few months, you will may forget some few things. So you have to retain everything in one day in prelims, polity, history, geography in uh, means in two days entire GS you have to recollect. So for that purpose revision is very important. Multiple revisions. Revisions are very very important because most of the students whatever effort they do major effort, effort they actually waste. So uh, because if you don't revise whatever effort you are putting in that will be wasted. So revisions are I think at least not even 10 I think at least 20 revisions should be there or more. Now, how you can do 20 revisions? 
तो देर इज अ टेक्निक फॉर दैट जस्ट मेक सिनॉपसिस वॉट एवर यू हैव लर्न लेट सपोज यू हैव अटेंडेड वन लेक्चर टूडे तो मीन्स लेट सपोज थ्री आवर्स लेक्चर इज देयर नॉर्मली तो थ्री आवर्स लेक्चर यू माइट यू विल बी राइटिंग मे बी सेवन एट टेन पेजेस तो इन दो सेवन एट और टेन पेजेस जस्ट लर्न दो पेजेस एंड देन मेक वेरी शॉर्ट नोट्स वेरी वेरी शॉर्ट नोट्स जस्ट पॉइंट्स इन हार्डली आई थिंक वन पेज ए फोर साइज बैक टू बैट बैक एट द मोस्ट यू कैन इजीली रिड्यूस दैट एंड इफ यू विल मेक सिनॉप्स इन वन ग्लेंस यू कैन रिवाइज द एंटायर चैप्टर एंड इजीली यू कैन कीप ऑन रिवाइजिंग फॉर नेक्स्ट मे बी टेन डेज देन इट विल बी इम्प्रिंटेड इन यूर माइंड एंड यू नो वंस यू विल यू नो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लर्न समथिंग तो यू विल लर्न ओनली इन अ होलिस्टिक मैनर so the if everything is in mind you can correlate things and each thing will reinforce the other will it will be easier for you to retain so uh, for example if you want to learn word meanings so there is are two options one is that you may learn word and meaning second option when you are learning word meaning try to learn the sentence itself which will be easier just word and meaning and entire sentence and meaning entire sentence will be much easier because that is more meaningful so once you will make synopsis you can correlate things you will have a holistic understanding and you can easily retain so revisions are very important and as i told you in approach k uh, to the point is very important one book i think in every area uh, is class note if you are attending classes class notes and one book will be sufficient now finally i'll come to books now this is a very difficult question in economics the problem is that कि देर इज नो गुड बुक विच कॉम्प्रीहेंसिवली कवर्स योर सिलेबस दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम बुक्स आर लॉट ऑफ बुक्स आर देयर बट देर इज डर्थ ऑफ बुक्स लाइक बट स्टिल अमंग सम बुक्स द इफ वी से स्टैंडर्ड बुक देन इंडियन इकोनॉमी अमंग स्टैंडर्ड बुक्स इंडियन इकोनॉमी परफॉर्मेंस एंड पॉलिसीज परफॉर्मेंस एंड पॉलिसीज इट इज बाय उमा कपिला by uma kapila indian economy actually uma kapila has written uh, she is uh, this uh, uh, professor in delhi university so she has written one very bulky book also indian economy since independence that is not needed it is less bulky actually so it is prescribed in graduation ba third year so indian economy performance and policies by uma kapila although there is there are other two books like datan sundaram but that is very bulky so no need to go through that book is very bulky the good book is very good but actually lot of irrelevant things are there from upsc perspective so uma kapila is quite good book but it will cover maybe 70% of your syllabus not 100% because no book can cover 100% syllabus so indian economy performance and policies is good book other regarding ncrts you know in class uh, 11th indian there is a book indian economic development so this book is good you can go through this book and uh, in class 12th in class 12th there are two books one is micro economics and other is macro m a c r o macro economics so micro economics and macro economics micro economics you know micro means small macro means large micro economic studies one unit and it studies economic system as a whole macro to so which branch of economics these are two branches of economics micro studies one unit only means one from one person like income of one person and here we will discuss not one person national income total income of in the country here we will study uh, production by one firm and here we will study gdp overall production value of all output in a country so which book is relevant for your exam micro macro macro so micro is not relevant you no need to go through this book so you may go through macro economics okay so macro economics you may go through but you may skip one chapter in which you will find graphs that is not relevant for upsc so there is a national income accounting chapter in which graphs are there so that except that chapter that unit you can study entire book hmm whole book almost ha except one unit which is related with graphs etc okay so but rather my suggestion is that instead of ncrt you may go buy the same book by another author ic dingra ic dingra's language is very good means as compared to ncrt so instead of this ncrt same book same syllabus same content but author ic dingra is better by ic dingra to so, author ic dingra ha 11th 
एंड इलेवेंथ इंडियन इकोनॉमी इंडियन इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट एंड ट्वेल्थ क्लास मैक्रो ट्वेल्थ क्लास ओनली मैक्रो माइक्रो इज नॉट नीडेड बोध बोध आईसी डिंगरा बुक इज ऑफ इलेवेंथ एज वेल एज फॉर ट्वेल्थ तो आईसी डिंगरा बुक इज फॉर बोथ बोथ द लैंग्वेज इज वेरी गुड एक्चुअली वेरी लूसिड वेरी गुड बुक ओके अपार्ट फ्रॉम तो बुक्स आई थिंक इज सफिशियंट दिस वन एंड अदर थिंग इज मे बी कोचिंग नोट इफ यू विल बी अटेंडिंग क्लासेस Rather here you know के माई कवरेज इज वेरी कॉम्प्रेसिव आई टेक मच मोर टाइम देन अदर टीचर्स ऑलमोस्ट फोर्टी फिफ्टी परसेंट मोर टाइम बट माई सजेशन इज वेरी सिंपल इफ यू आर अटेंडिंग माई क्लासेज नो नीड टू स्टडी एनी बुक वॉट आई कैन चैलेंज आई कैन रिड्यूस योर एफर्ट फ्रॉम एनी थिंग अंडर द स्काई दे कैन आस एनी थिंग अंडर द स्काई टू एनी थिंग इन योर कॉपी दिस इज ऑलमोस्ट श्योर कि एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी टू एट्टी परसेंट क्वेश्चन विल बी देर डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम योर क्लास नोट्स इन प्रिलिम्स at least 50 because in last almost 17 years of my teaching hardly may not be, i don't remember any year where 50% question didn't click from class note you can check the notes even last of last year but i'll take much longer time it will be somewhat detailed means to but whatever but at the most current you have to update on your own because 100% i cannot give you each and every current fact whatever relevant important thing i will analyze here but some minor factual some questions in prelims may be from minor facts so all fact cannot be given but from class note itself it should be clear ki you will be above cut off in prelims cut off is hardly 50 around 50 55 so it is sure ki in economy section from just from class notes you can check that and uh, uh, means previous years notes you can take and see the questions how many questions were directly written in the notes so 50 plus will be sure in mains it will be almost 70 to 80% because mains is more predictable but to get good marks you have to add something from current you have to supplement that because i cannot dictate each and every point as such but almost 70 80 80% question rather will be, you will be there from notes you can you can check that also so even you can actually supplement this by class notes also okay why because i said ki just if you will go through class notes na if you have thoroughly learned class notes then everything will be knowing at least 80% things you must already be knowing what is written in these books much more than that rather much more than depth because ncert you will find hardly one third whatever is there will be there in your class notes if you can check class notes it will be almost three times more or some topics four times more than what is mentioned in this in this book so if you can go through just like novel after learning class note because those will be somewhat heavy because i'll dictate a lot actually and i'll go in some detail means logic reason why and how so it will take some time here but once you will understand reason it will be much easier for you to retain that fact so you can have class notes even uh, that will be more useful okay so this basic book uh, means and this other this is book on indian economy and this is basic concept but one one issue is there in this book macro this book is not on indian economy you will find what is actually government budget fiscal deficit but you won't find what are uh, the uh, means uh, policies in india it is not written for indian context this is the problem but questions are from applied aspect so you will g- uh, get only one half thing you will get only what is meaning of balance of payment only they have mentioned only two topics balance of payment and exchange rate but two topics fdi etc they have not mentioned in this book so you will know only basics but the questions will be on applied aspect you should know basics and then you should actually have to see applied aspect okay so i repeat against against book so if you want to go through a standard book though this is one good standard book okay not much bulky second is regarding ncrts so either ncrt or ic dingra 11th class is simple book so uh, this book you should go through and second is if you want you should go through this book but you have to see these topics in indian context also and other thing overall class notes other and finally this current affairs you know current affairs are very important as you know so but for that purpose i think for economy what is needed i think no separate newspaper is needed for economy first of all if you think you there is business standard is needed economic times is needed there is no logic because focus of these newspapers wasn't wasn't is in business not on economy so no newspaper for especially as such uh, economics whatever newspaper you are following the hindu indian express or what, whichever newspaper just follow business section in that one newspaper actually just one newspaper not two at least now you know sometime toppers say ki i used to study three four newspapers but they study once they have thoroughly covered basics 
in the last stage and they can find out which is relevant article in one newspaper currently if you are starting so especially for beginners one will be more than sufficient and one magazine one any magazine whichever you think actually vision magazine or lot of uh, vision magazines are there online etc to so any one magazine whichever you think is best is more than sufficient and magazine for not economy general nothing especially for economy you should study okay and what now in in newspaper also in hindu also the hindu or indian express whichever newspaper you are following so daily hardly one or two or three articles are relevant in business page not all articles are relevant one or two or three you have to be very selective in that like you know i'll give you brief idea which articles are relevant or which are irrelevant first of all which are irrelevant company specific news are not relevant any data monthly data never relevant in general quarterly data also not relevant because usually monthly data quarterly data is available though that is not actually relevant if there is a major change you can see ki what change is there some data changes on daily basis like census goes up and down daily basis rupee appreciation depreciation daily basis until there is major change you should not actually focus on this no company specific news and apart from that like uh, which news is important important is that any new policy of government if any article of uh, on a particular economic issue relating to your main syllabus like agriculture farmers distress economic slowdown government's fiscal situation okay so if any article relating to indian economy especially relating to these topics is important apart from that uh, means anything which have social implications social long term implications for general public that is important like rbi guidelines are lot of guidelines are there but every guideline is not important that guideline which will affect general people which have some social implications those news you should go through means which have some socio economic implications rather than pure technical guideline for regulation of banks or nbfc is no need for going to that so mainly social implications so you have to be even very selective in uh, in one newspaper itself actually in, in business section also okay other is that like you know other important source is economic survey to so economic survey and budget okay so first suggestion is that you know ke don't be hurry to study economic survey first you should be at least have, have some basic idea about basics then you should go through one thing second thing don't go through economic survey directly it is better you should go through synopsis synopsis will be uh, even synopsis will be too long i think uh, now the uh, economic survey is in two volumes so most of the synopsis are in almost uh, um, i think 70 80 pages most of the synopsis which are available on net they are actually about 70 80 pages so synopsis i think will be okay so no need to go through economic survey why because if you go through economic survey lot of data analysis is there and everything is not relevant for uh, gs point of view and it will be difficult to understand also so synopsis will be i think uh, quite useful but you should study uh, first you should have at least basics idea some basics then go through synopsis of economic survey and uh, just any one actually you can download that is freely available and you can go through that as far as budget is concerned budget is not actually uh, no need to obsess with budget but uh, just two three two three sources you know uh, when budget is presented you can go through newspaper of next day full newspaper will be with budget that will be sufficient and at the most from two magazines sufficient so budget is not too long actually relatively economic survey is somewhat long so that is why synopsis will be more than sufficient but in some chapter if you think that chapter is very important for means point of view you may go through particular chapter of that and economic survey is available on finance ministry's website just mention finance ministry on the uh, uh, that means the on the main page there is a link for uh, economic survey you can go through selected chapter chapter if you want actually and there, and there are two volume volume 1 and 2 which volume is more important volume 1 is more important because that is analytical in means questions are from analytical point of view some issues actually some policies so volume 1 is uh, two is uh, sorry one is more important two selected topics are important like selected topics which are mentioned in your syllabus like infrastructure in industry some one topic related to social sector so only few topics are important in chapter in volume 2 volume 1 fully is important because this is analytical so this is regarding uh, current affairs so you have to be very selective in current and my session for those who are starting now so you should focus less on current now focus more on basics actually and gradually as basics will clear you will now gradually increase focus on current this should be the broad approach because if basics are not clear then current uh, will not be uh, much relevant meaningful for you 
Okay, so this is the broad actually approach strategy. Now, if you want to discuss any specific question, then we can discuss that. Any question from you people regarding anything, regarding whatever topics we have discussed or any other topic? Hmm. You can take mic. Sir, what is the weight, uh, weightage of economic section in GS paper 3? In GS paper 3, you know, K, uh, out of, uh, means almost 45% uh, slavers part means out of 250 marks approximately it may vary question may like this year actually uh, nine questions were there so approximately up to 50 percent 40 to 50 percent question 40 percent minimum up to 50 percent plus few topics are there in gs uh, uh, two also in gs2 like is international organizations topic some related some uh, topics are intermingling with governance like last year there was a question on gst that is actually basically purely related with economics but put in governance sometime like we also discuss like fiscal federalism competitive federalism here in government budgeting that is there is some intermingling is there apart from that some education health also we will also discuss some social issues here in developmental policy there may be some intermingling in that poverty uh, uh, poverty and social issues some intermingling so few topics are there in uh, actually paper too especially like poverty and education health related topics and like some governance related topics and external sector like WTO especially, WTO, IMF, World Bank, some international organizations. But as such it is in paper 3, in paper 3 around uh, almost 40 to 50 percent questions are from economy section. And in prelims about 20 questions on an average, if you see the average of last 5 years around 20 questions are there, means including current, related current, so around minimum 15, maximum 25, 30, 15 to 30 questions, so around 20 directly are from economy. But you cannot ignore any subject. You have to make a uh, you know uh, balance because there are always diminishing returns. If you think in one subject you can do 80, 90 percent, it is not possible. Nobody can assure that person can do 90 percent or 100 percent question. So you have to make a balance in entire area of GS. Sometimes they may ask more question from one subject, sometimes may from other. So any other doubt? about anything whatever we have discussed regarding this approach relevance anything uh -huh. how to cover agriculture related yes, part yes. so agriculture related part is that i think uh, you can go through uh, the notes will be better like in books uh, you won't find in the detail you won't find agriculture, there is a topic on agriculture, but you will find only few topics. Maybe out of 10 topics, maybe 3 topics, 3 f maybe you may hardly will find. So you should f uh, actually uh, from class notes, if uh, you can have class notes, otherwise in net there is a lot of matter on all these topics. Internet you can directly search, but each and every topic you have to cover. You have to see what kind of questions, basic of this and what uh, are the dimensions. On every topic there may be three, four, five, six dimensions. On every dimension at least one page content you should have. So you have to cover the main syllabus. And whatever article in newspaper is there relating to agriculture sector, any aspect is important. Agriculture is most important. So you should, uh, most of the articles are relevant, relating to agriculture. Mostly cover from uh, notes and newspaper. Huh, yes, news, yeah, because actually in means most of the questions are applied current aspects. So in agriculture they will ask questions which are related with current issues, current reforms, current agriculture distress etc. What are reasons for this, what reforms were initiated. So uh, topics are this but most probably questions will be from current. So whatever article in newspaper is there relating to agriculture that is always important. Sir, you are saying dimensions, sir, type which dimensions? Dimensions means any topic. Uh, like in agriculture sector, like for example, uh, uh, like subsidies, agriculture subsidies. So you have to see what are, uh, what kind of question may be asked. What is need of subsidy or objectives of subsidy? Why they are needed? Other is what are major subsidies? Like fertilizer subsidy, power subsidy, irrigation subsidy, procurement subsidy, types of subsidies. Like other is that what problems are created by subsidies? Suggestions, how to reform subsidy. So these are six dimensions. There may be one or two more dimensions, any recent government measure. So on every topic you should see what kind of question may be asked, you have to explore. Actually preparation for civil services actually does not demand you should cram data. 
because computers can actually uh, store much better data than human beings they need people who can think who can understand so they want to know your understanding you should uh, have to actively think so approach will be basic should be clear then current correlate with current why and how think discuss why so you have to develop your analytical ability thinking ability connect things actually how things are related why why not this this approach is needed here sir how to start learning the basic concepts and terms in economy sir uh, basic concepts i think uh, if uh, let's suppose you are attending classes then there won't be issue to that will be taught in class and the most my session is that don't hesitate because this is your right if you have any doubt you should ask that with teacher because objective of teacher is not to teach but to make you understand okay the one thing if let's suppose you are planning not to join any institute then i think uh, basic book then i think like this book uh, this book uh, this book is very simple you will understand you will understand to like in some areas like economics is slightly technical to uh, but you know if you will study once you may not understand again you may study but you should select the uh, material which should be relevant material should be relevant because in economics actually uh, books are not up to the mark especially the books which are written for this exam uh, they are not majority of books are not up to the mark so there are even mistakes are there lot of mistakes are there in, in books so in economy there will be some problem uh, regarding books so you can have uh, if you if access could be there you can get photocopy of uh, class notes that are uh, i think 70% at least you will understand without attending classes also you can have photocopy if it if possible otherwise these books whichever you think is easy you know the most important thing is that your objective is to understand learn so you should follow that study material which is easier to understand simple thing whichever book and in general my general suggestion once you start studying so initially you should start with bulky book or less bulky book less bulky will concise book actually so class notes are always actually best class notes are in general best because they are concise they are related uh, relevant they are concise and you have understood them understood means you have learned them already here so they are easy to retain so you have to be very selective in studies books or maybe any study material so any other doubt okay then we'll meet probably in future and best of luck